Hello and thanks very much for joining me on Dean the Vaping Biker. Today we're going to be looking at another two mechs. Um, there are some interesting ones to show you and I've got to say I've been pleasantly surprised by these bad boys. Absolutely. It, 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 it kind of shocked me to be honest. I'm not going to lie. We've had um, we've had a sort of a little bit of an influx with mechs, especially hybrids coming from China of late and uh, some of them have performed less than admirably, shall we say. Um, some of them have not been too bad but uh, I was very, very surprised about the performance of these little bad boys when I very first started using them. So before any further before any further ado, there we go, get your words out Dean, let's go up close and we'll have a little look at the Coilart Mage Tricker Kits in both black and this funky pink resin kind of affair. Let's check these bad boys out shall we? Come on then! Alrighty then, so the box is one of these two-piece jobbies. This is just a sleeve that goes over the top of it. It's got the Mage Mech Tricker Kit on there. I'm still not overly happy about the name of it, but it is what it is. Um, there will be, I believe, a scratch and sniff going on down this bit as well. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, that's what's on the outside. On the inside, obviously when you open up the box, it's got all of the, uh, the social media gubbins going on there. And uh, on this side, it does tell you what colour that you've got. Now then, uh, underneath here we do have a bunch of foam going on we have one of these tiny little screwdrivers that I just I can't use these I cannot use these at all for this uh, for this idea I've been using my coil master screwdriver just because it's been much much easier but uh, I guess it's there if you do want to use it uh, also in here you do get uh, a vape tank band thing which <laughs> is kind of irrelevant on a uh, on an RDA but it is what it is and it says coil art and all that good stuff on it um, you've got a couple of extra o-rings and some extra grub screws these grub screws are the same as a what installed which is a bit of a shame and I'll talk to you about that in a second underneath there you do have a little bit of a warning the mech mod is intended for those people with extensive experience and require a thorough knowledge um, a battery safety to operate them without hazard. Please test your atomizer on an ohm reader or box mod before you connect to me uh, on mech mod in case of short circuit, which I think is good. It's good to have some kind of warning on there. And underneath that, you do get this big coaster thing, but on the back there, it does also tell you just to make sure that uh, where all the bits are that unscrew, you know? So uh, that's in very important to be aware of all that good stuff. Now then, Let's have a little look at the uh, the two setups that I've got for you today. Um, these are the two that I have uh, been sent. Now this one is somewhat on the pink side. Are we a little bit dark? Are we a little bit dark? Let's brighten that up, see if that helps. This one is somewhat on the pink side. Um, and this one, obviously this black one is a bit of a bit of a badass. You've got this uh, this coating on this black one, which is kind of, um, it's kind of got this sort of speckly thing going on, a little bit sandblasted, a little bit kind of just angry and I like it I like this a lot this has a resin cover going on the outside of it we're a little bit too bright now aren't we um, has a little bit of a resin cover going on the outside of it and uh, it is what it is but uh, there are a, just a couple of very small differences now let's have a little look at this black one to begin with obviously we've got this coil arc sign going over the top which I'm not a massive fan of the branding that big on the side of the tube but it is what it is um, there is a kind of a, a, a lacquer or or something over the top of the copper there so it doesn't spoil which I think is quite uh, is quite interesting on the top there you do have a little bit of uh, of sort of engraved not engraving laser etching maybe out of the uh, out of the covering there or out of the paint uh, showing designed by coil art in California although obviously this is made in China and it does say a mage underneath there nothing underneath at the bottom on the button so nothing exciting going on there now this one just there is there is nothing to undo at the top there that is just purely the uh, the the hybrid connection going on there and obviously you've got those threads in there which are the clear copper as well now underneath if we look at the switch and the inside of the mech uh, let's have a little zoom in shall we so the inside of this mech it does have what appears to be a kind of a uh, um, a Delrin tube going on on the inside of this one um, but which gives you a certain amount of battery safety when it comes to uh, any knackered battery wraps that you may not have noticed however there isn't anything at the end I would like to have seen a some kind of insulator at the end of that tube to be honest with you 
Now then, this is the button. The button itself is nice and easy to operate. You've got a little sort of spring-loaded um, battery rattle stopper going on there, which I think is quite good. Although you do have the, uh, the, the flathead screwdriver in that contact there, you don't necessarily need a flathead screwdriver to be able to get this out. Obviously, you've got your, uh, you've got your venting down in the base of the button as well. And to make this work, all you're doing is you're unscrewing it like so and then pressing away. I must admit, I do kind of like this button action, although it is a little bit, little bit wobbly. Now then, you can unscrew that a fair old way if you do need a sort of a quite a large throw, but uh, if you keep going all the way, then it'll pop out like it's just done and uh, bring the magnets with it as well. Inside the uh, housing itself, you can see those three holes for venting. And on the top there, you've got the little indent there for what is this sort of triangular piece going around that firing pin like so. Now, uh, I've not had really had any issues with this. I've not actually cleaned this firing pin up. So unlike a, a copper firing pin that we've seen earlier in the week, I've not had any connection issues with this in the site, so I've not had a requirement to. And I have used it quite a lot, and, uh, and yeah, no issues with this button in the slightest. So to get this all back together again, we'll pop the contact back in the hole. We'll get the switch and we will see, I'm gonna pop my finger on that, on the magnet there, and I'm gonna see which side repels it and which side um, which side uh, attracts it. So we want it to repel, which is what that is. So we're gonna tip that upside down and pop that. Whee, that was too close, that was too close. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try that again shall we okay so that's a repelling side <laughs> pop that in there like so and away we go the threads are nice and easy to catch when you're doing this up, which I do like. And now uh, I've not had any issues with firing this and that triangle kind of coming out of the hole and then getting stuck or anything like that, because there's not really a requirement to undo this button too much. Now, the only difference with the resin tube here is that, uh, that I can see at least, if we undo the top there, first of all, you can undo the connector at the very top, like so and underneath there apart from having a different color uh, resin on the button to the tube which is just a little bit weird the uh, the button does act in exactly the same way although this one is brass with a uh, it looks like it could be a silver plated connector going on on the bottom there haven't turned my phone off um, but also inside there we do have kind of a see-through kind of uh, sleeve, which is fine. It still offers you protection there, but just be careful you don't lose that when you're taking out batteries and all that good jazz. So uh, yeah, those are, the, those are the main differences to look at when it comes to the tubes. Now we'll have a little look at the RDA. All right then, so the RDAs are for all intents and purposes very, very similar. Obviously at this closer angle, you can see this kind of speckled, mottled, angry, sandblasted kind of um, paintwork that you will also get on the mod as well, which I think is pretty darn awesome to be honest with you. But before we screw that on there, you can see that you have got a kind of a coil art going in there. It's obscured a little bit by the uh, by the finish on that, but it is what it is. You can see it a little bit better on the uh, on the brass version right there. Now then, the drip tip is your goon size. So uh, once you can get it out, it's in there nice and snug. But once you can get that out, if I pop my uh, DHD drip tip in there, that will uh, that will fit on there nice and lovely. So uh, yeah, goon size, you can put all your favorite tips going on in there. Underneath, you've got uh, Mage designed by Coil Art underneath, and that is the same on this one as well. And if we... Take the uh, the barrel off there. Here we come to one of the things, I may as well leave that screwed on. Here we come to one of the things that uh, sort of frustrates me ever so slightly, um, and that is these O-rings. Now, uh, one of these sides here, you, you can see that I've, uh, I've lubed these up like a monster. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here because I want you to see that this O-ring has had a little chunk taken out of it already. 
Can you see that that's a little bit? There we go. You can see that there's a bit coming out of there. So I am going to need to replace these O-rings now. Um, I have lubed these up already after cleaning the atomizer out. That's why there's a little bit of uh, that's why there's a little bit of juice going on. Now then, you do have big old holes going down that way and then going straight up. It's not kind of a nice gentle bend to go up there, so you'd expect it to be quite noisy. But uh, on the top there, this is the deck that we've got to play with. Now there we've got the uh, the four screws that are tiny. Phillips head screws. Now I did say earlier on that I use my coil master, coil master um, screwdriver to get them out, but um, it is you do need quite the small screwdriver. I mean, this one is very very pointy that comes with the kit, and that's absolutely what's needed. I would like to have seen these come with these Phillips heads installed, and then the extra of having some Allen headed grub screws going in there as well. To be honest with you. Now then, when it comes to the build deck itself, you can see that you've got those massive great air holes uh, coming up underneath where your coils are going and uh, no squonk pin or anything like that coming with this but in a mech kit you wouldn't really expect it um, and you can see that uh, the post is while it looks a little bit out of sync they're not loose they're not kind of moving around or anything along those lines they're just kind of plonked in there and there's a very very slight what there's a slight angle on this negative post right there now then there is space around the uh, this side of the of the deck as well around this side of the airflow and that in some instances is somewhere that you can squirt a little bit of juice down if you want to really fill this up because this is a super and I mean super deep well going on there we've got uh, we've got sort of a fair few mil happening and uh, I've had no problems with a lot of the coils that I want to put on there uh, the holes themselves are nice and big and beefy so what we're going to install in these today is some uh, just some dual core Claptons so let's get on with that shall we what I'm going to use today is I'm going to use the three and a half mil rod out of the coil master coiling kit I've already made up some uh, some dual core I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this, but we'll give it a go. Eh? Um, some dual core 26 gauge, two core with uh, two core with 35 gauge on the outside. And what we'll do is we'll just stick this in here. We'll give it five five and a half wraps, and then we'll uh, we'll get it installed. So once I've got my uh, once I've got my wraps going on there, before I take it out of the coil master, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it apart like so push it back together again and there we've got a nicely spaced flattened dual core Clapton going on and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install these now and then we will have a chat in a moment so I just thought I'd show you about the uh, how I go about wicking these um, essentially what I'm going to do is just get cut a uh, piece of Muji like so uh, these are three and a half mil ID coils so they aren't nice and big chunky monkeys uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the outside sheath of the Muji like so give it a little bit of a rub to get rid of the uh, the loose fibers going on there twist her up Make sure we're nice and snug. Now I'm going to cut just outside of the, uh, the, the, the the build deck area. Still not turn my phone off. Then what we're doing, just give her a little bit of a tickle. Tickle your wick. Hashtag tickle your wick. Make that a thing. Right. Then I'm going to fold that under. And once again, you don't want to compress this too much. You do just want to make sure that it sits in there of its own volition. And uh, you don't have any over, over kind of angry fibers poking around the outside. Alrighty, so that's the rough idea about the wicking. Then what I'll do is I'll pop a little bit of juice on the top and I'll make sure that we're not having the wick touching these air holes because we don't want any juice to uh, float its way down there. But uh, but yeah, that's it. Otherwise, let's uh, go back up top again, shall we? Let's do that. So that was the up close and personal with the two mods themselves, and we've got the uh, the coil build that I've stuck in this black one as well. Now in the uh, in the brass one, what I've done just to kind of uh, for for completeness is I've just put a regular round wire build going on in there directly over the top of the air hole, and uh, everyone's a winner. Now uh, when I did take these out with, or I say when I took these out with me, I took the pink one out with me on the day that I was hanging out with uh, with with a few people, a few mates at a vape 
tape shop and I didn't expect it to be a great performer, I'm not going to lie. I coiled it up and I didn't put any juice on it because I figured I might buy some when I was at the shop. I threw some juice on it at the shop and I was quite shocked about that one. So that's what happened there. Now when I got the black one coiled up shortly afterwards, that surprised me even more. And so to let you know a little bit more, let's just check out these, uh, these voltage drop tests and then we can come back and have a little bit of a chat a little bit further. Let's do that. Come on then. Alrighty then, so here we go. We are going to be using the same cell that we've been using for all of these tests. Uh, we've got this on the top here. Now one of the things to be aware of, um, I didn't explain earlier on, that uh, this top section on the resin mod will undo because that does help with adjusting for battery rattle as well. Because I think this is going to be a little bit long when I do it on this one as well. So let me just, uh, let me just pop this in here like so. Okay, so now you can see that there is quite the gap between the uh, the button and the resin base there. Um, so what you can do here is you can loosen off those top threads a little bit, tighten up these ones a little bit so you have an equal space there. But, you know, depending on the size of your 510 pin, that may not be an issue. So let's just unscrew the button so we can get this bad boy firing. And we're expecting to see 4.2 on the readout. And 4.2 we see. So let's get the uh, the Yeti in now. Alrighty, so let's have a little check and see what we're reading out at. 3.7, 3.7, 3.68. So that's the brass and resin. Two 3.7s and a 3.68. Let's go on to the copper mech. Alrighty, and here we go with the coil art copper and black version of their tricker kit. Uh, still the same battery, it's had a rest after being fully charged again, and away we go. We'll pop that in there. Obviously, we don't have to worry about the battery adjustment on this one because it does have that little springy jobby in the bottom there. Just to unscrew that uh, button a little bit. Okay, so 4.2 volts on the readout. And 4.2 it is. So we'll pop on the Yeti. And let's go for the three pulses. 377, 375, 372. Okay, it's 377, 375, 372. Now let's go back up top. So what about that then? That's a bit of a shocker, isn't it? <laughs> Hey, what? All right then, let's pull in the uh, let's pull in the figures so we can have a little look and see how that affects the chart, shall we? So when we look at the copper, the copper mage, a copper tricker kit, the coil art mage copper tr tr tricker kit, even uh, coming through an average of three point seven five. When we look at the only other copper kits that we've had to look at, which comes to the tsunami copper at three point seven, um, the geek vape karma, which is three point six eight, and the uh, the tomahawk at three point seven eight. Obviously, we're towering above the Karma and the Tsunami, um, but we are under the uh, the Tomahawk ever such a ball hair. So that's quite a shocker. And when we look at the brass, we're looking at 3.69 on the average, which when we're comparing it to the, uh, the, 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 the brass on the... Geek Vape Tsunami, we're a touch under that Geek Vape Tsunami, but uh, you wouldn't really recognize it to be honest with you. Uh, but obviously, we are underneath those uh, the, the 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 back to basics and the twisted from Purge. So, yeah, I mean, without a doubt, the copper one is uh, let's pull that down again. The copper one is without a doubt a hard hitter, and this has absolutely surprised the crap out of me. It really, really has. Can we finally have a vape now? Let's do that. It performs really well. Now that's with the airflow actually fully open. Let's do it again. A real cloud chucking beast. The airflow is very, very smooth. And that's something I noticed when I first started using this one. The, uh, the brass section there or the brass version of it there. Let's have a little toot on that one as well. Really smooth airflow, really flavorful vape. I'm, I'm enjoying these two kits a lot. 
and it surprised me. Um, okay, so let's have a little look at the uh, the negatives. Let's go for the negatives. So first off, on the resin version, because you don't have the springy battery contact thingy to adjust for battery rattle, you do have to kind of equal the space out either side of the central um, resin tube there, which, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. You don't really notice it that much. I mean, I've equaled it out a little bit there and a little bit there. You don't really notice it massively. Obviously, the button... Um, the button is a little bit wobbly. There is a little bit of movement in there once you've unscrewed it, and that is the same on the uh, the black one as well. I'm not a massive fan of the resin, to be honest with you. I think it's a little bit of a ball ache, and while you don't really need to worry too much about, I think this has a, a coating on the outside of it again, so you don't really have to worry too much about cleaning up the outside of this. However, because of this brass top cap, um, you may see, if I, uh, if I can get the light in there, that that's looking pretty dark filthy already and so that is something I would keep on top of because if you do get yourself a, uh, a white bit of, uh, of um, kitchen roll and if I can just see if I can show you this give it a good old wipe around like so and we can see that we're getting just a little bit of, I don't know if that's going to pop up actually, just a little bit of tinging kind of coming through onto the uh, onto the white kitchen roll. So I think there may be a coating on the inside of this, but it will patina, it will tarnish. And so if you get a brass one, make sure you do clean the inside of this top cap, even if you clean nothing else. Now then... Um, the only other thing is the O-rings because of the airflow control um, uh, the holes on the top cap um, they do have a tendency to wrench those O-rings a little bit so that's something that you do have to be aware of you do have to lube up and you do have to just keep an eye on those O-rings to make sure they don't go too nasty luckily you do get the extras in the spares so that uh, that makes life a little bit easier I must admit now then um, on to the positives that's all I can think of when it comes to negatives to be honest with you so positive top down is the fact that we can put our uh, goon size or 810 whatever they're called uh, drip tips going on the top there like I said the DHD drip tips I think fit on there gorgeously I'm very very happy about that um, we have the single coil option on the uh, airflow control if we want it which is great uh, obviously you still have quite a large chamber going on there the center posts aren't like some that we've seen recently where they take up quite a lot of space inside there so uh, you know you're still going to have a bit of air sort of running around inside that chamber when you are in single coil mode but you can do it if you really want to i've been just loving this in dual coil to be honest with you um the reason i did the uh, the spaced one um, that we saw in the up close there was just because there's no i didn't have to bend the legs around or anything like that by pulling it out and spacing it they just slot right in and they're a winner but otherwise you do just have to make sure that your coils are over the top of the airflow but we know this from other um, rdas of a similar kind of ilk now then the finish particularly on this black one i think is absolutely brilliant i love this kind of rough angry finish it does tend to smooth out a little bit over time and while I have used this a lot I've not had any um, sort of scratches that have upset it or anything that have upset the finish um, to a point where I can see the copper all the way through or have even got any kind of angry scratches on it I think uh, it's a pretty hard wearing kind of um, material that they've put over the top of it however they've done the paint or the Cerakote or whatever it is um, it's hard wearing and I like that a lot I don't like thinking about going back to the negatives for a second I don't like this branding I think this can uh, this can probably Probably go or at least be made a lot smaller and maybe go kind of around the outside rather than along uh, one of the sides I think that would be a little bit more tasteful even if it was just on the switch section I think that could look quite nice um, but having said that, also with the tube, I think a positive is the fact that with both of them, you do get the protection um, of that inner sleeve. So if there is a, uh, a tear in a wrap that you haven't noticed, then uh, then you can kind of, uh, you get you have got that little bit of protection there because this one is, I'm using positive down because the venting is in the base there. Um, but like I said, with, with, with any mech, you should always, always, always inspect your uh, wrap to make sure it's tip top quality quality and uh, it's doing exactly what it is if you're unsure tear it off and start again rewrap your batteries um now then uh, the uh, like i said before the, the slight wobble on the button is a bit of a bugger but i mean having said that i mean dependent on your battery it's very it's a nice light press i like it i mean it's it's a little bit can't you hear what i mean it's a little bit kind of noisy i guess but 
for the money that these mics are, I am perfectly happy with this. These, this one, this one here, there we go, we'll put it the right way up, is by far my favourite cheap mech kit that I've seen to date. As far as I can, it's a bold statement, isn't it? What? But this one, the copper one with the black coating is absolutely my favourite. Um, I just really fucking like using it. It's got a reassuring weight to it as well, and it just it just works, and it does what it says on the tin. And you can screw that button all the way up, and this is with both of them, obviously. So once that is screwed all the way up like so, then uh, you're locked. You can't fire it, so you can bang it in your pocket, and away you go. Now then, looking at the pricing, um, I've done a very, very quick Google and Coil Art Mage Tricker Kit. Um, I am going to, uh, I'm going to search just in the UK, just because that's where I live. Uh, but any Google will be able to find this very, very quickly. The very first one coming up is Evolution Vaping in the UK. That's the coloured version um, coming in at $54.99. So that's the brass and resin. Now, the sleeves aren't interchangeable as far as I know, which is a little bit of a shame, but it is what it is um now then i think these guys also will do the uh the black one as well let's just have a little look on there while we're there so the black and copper one is 50.99 50 pounds and 99 pence there's only four of those left in stock apparently um but uh, but yeah everyone's a winner so just running through the things in case i've forgotten anything uh stainless what constructed with stainless steel no it's copper what um <laughs> drip drip dip black delray oh dear there's so many issues gold plated decks on both of them anyway overall diameter is 24 millimeter it's a funny thing because i did not expect to like these as much as i have however when i've not been using some of the other mix this has been one that i've been reaching for when i've been at my desk which it surprised the crap out of me it really really has what i'm going to go and do now is i'm going to go and clean up all the insides of this all the threads on it um i'm going to put a little bit of three in one oil on the bottom threads there just to just to make sure it stays nice and clean um and all in all there's not really a great deal else i can tell you but this definitely absolutely 100 percent gets the thumbs up from me and let me tell you it surprised me as much as it's probably surprised you It's a beast. Anyway, um, what we'll do is we will, uh, I'll see you on the next one, I guess. <laughs> if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button, which will be around about here, somewhere around about here. And uh, we'll pop the next, oh, the last couple of videos up the top there and the top there. Have it large.